Minister, we're now on the sixth day without bus services across the country. And people are angry about the loss of services, and indeed workers are very angry about the race to the bottom uh, and to a low-wage, uh, low-cost public transport model with a draconian reduction in their overall take-home income. People have, outside in the regions, no access to public transport. Towns that, that are already uh, in deep trouble are dying on their feet without this connectivity. We have students having huge issues getting to university, to institutes of technology and various colleges. We have sick people having great difficulty in making hospital appointments. And notwithstanding that, uh, we still have uh, inertia and paralysis uh, in the Minister for Transport's reaction to this and the government's reaction to this. We have 110,000 regular passengers discommoded, 2,500 uh, workers who are in a very deeply anxious and worrying state. I would put it to you, Minister, that if this was Dublin bus or if this was affecting the, the capital, the issue would have been resolved much earlier. It's interesting that the Lewis dispute got resolved, Dublin bus dispute got resolved, the Garda pay issue got resolved, Minister. You were centrally involved in that. It broke Lansdowne. But this can't get resolved. Not only can't it get resolved, there's no attempt being made either behind the scenes uh, to try and, uh, and sort this out. One senses a hidden agenda, Minister, a hidden agenda that is determined to undermine the very concept of a public transport company. I have that real deep sense. I think that's a view that accords with the Minister for Transport's own personal ideology and philosophy. It's something I reject and something I do not support in any shape or, or form, because we do need a public transport company, in my view, uh, and that's a policy position. It's important to point out that there are options in advance of this dispute taking place. We've already pointed out room for manoeuvre in terms of the free travel issue and whether Bus Aird was getting enough. We've already made a point um, in terms of the public service obligation. And there's the additional facility that the Minister has in terms of cross subsidisation um, from reasonable profit, which the EU obliges the company and facilitates the companies to engage in. And Dublin Bus did extraordinarily well out of that last year in that facility. Bus Aird got about 400,000 from that facility. Point being, policy-wise, there was opportunities to create the conditions to facilitate a resolution of this. And remember in 2013, there was precedent when the then government facilitated intervention of two facilitators to uh, enable actions to be taken to get it back into the LRC. So this idea that we won't get involved at all doesn't hold water in terms of previous precedents. And I would put it to the Minister that the inertia is not good enough and people are being discommoded unreasonably. Minister, please. De Deputy Martin is absolutely correct that previous cases in relation to public transport disputes, for example in relation to Dublin bus, in relation to Irish Rail, have been resolved. And where were they resolved? They were resolved in the Workplace and Relations Commission. They were resolved in the Labour Court. That was government policy then in relation to supporting a part of our state who has a proven track record of dealing with industrial relations issues. That approach was used in relation to previous uh, disputes and industrial activity within the CIE group, and it, because it played a valuable and positive role there, that's why it is essential that the same approach be used now. And let's bear in mind the track record of the organisation that the government is supporting and is an agency of state. This is an organisation that over the recent period has been involved in 1,400 cases in relation to industrial acti activity or dispute. And the, and the WRC of itself played a successful role in 85% of those instances. So you're right to say there has been industrial relations difficulty in the CIE group, but of course what's missing in your analysis there is the very forum and the very mechanism that played a role in bringing those disputes to an end was the WRC, and that is why the government is standing behind the WRC and the Labour Court as the only forum in which that can be done again. 
In relation to your allegations in relation to Bus Aaron, uh, I, as Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, and the entire government, and we support Minister Ross in this, is absolutely committed to the concept and role of public transport, absolutely committed to the viability of Bus Aaron, and this is the very reason why in 2017 alone, €263 million Euro was made available to support public transport in our state, in bus and rail. It's the very reason why over the last two years alone, we have seen an increase in excess of 10% in support that the taxpayer puts in to the CIE group to support public transport and to support the sustainability of the bus airing group, which we know plays a vital role in allowing uh, 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 communities outside of Dublin to have access to their place of work and to their place of study. But to conclude where I begun, it is exactly because the Labour Court and Workplace Relations Commission have played a leading role in dealing with industrial relations difficulties in the CIE group alone that that is the only forum within which this issue can be dealt with now. Minister, Minister, because what the point I was making, 213, when all of that broke down, the government took a decision to appoint two experienced facilitators to get people back in to a facility. Nothing has happened here by the government, and nothing has happened for all of 215 uh, and right through 216, because, of course, it wasn't in your own backyard. And the proof of the pudding, Taoiseach, or sorry, um, the Minister. <laughs> But the proof of the pudding. The, the, the proof, if I may, the proof of the pudding is in an email, an email that was sent to you as Minister for Transport uh, in 23rd of December 2015 by Graham Doyle, who's alerting you back then. Trade unions are very concerned about possible measures in Bus Ayrton. However, we don't detect any immediate action on that, on that front. This is from your officials. They are likely to take a hard line, judging by comments being made. A lot of blame is being attributed to the NTA issuing licence to other operators. What's your response? We'll have to get together early January to refine how we all handle this. We'll op op obviously heat up and run into the elections. Report. You cynically ah. did absolutely nothing the report. because of the general election and the onset of it. And many problems were, were, were sowed as a result of that. And it's been that complete standoff that has caused the present crisis in Boss uh, And Minister Ross has said, I am not getting involved in any circumstances. I'm not even going to appoint facilitators. Thank and you, remember, Deputy this is not just now. a pay dispute. It's not just an IR dispute. It's a fundamentally structural issue in terms of a structural Thank change you, to Boss That's why it needs different inputs in addition to the IR input. And the Minister, in my opinion, has been severely lacking in addressing this particular issue. Minister. I hope at some point in Deputy Martin's analysis he will point to the fact that I was Minister for Transport. I was also the Minister of Transport that began the process of increasing investment in the CIE group after many years of that not being possible. I was also the Minister for Transport that played a role in the uh, bus fleet being renewed for Bus Air and, and Dublin Bus. And the reason why all of that happened is precisely because of the recognition that I and the then government had in relation to the role of Bus Air and, and the CIE group. That was the case then, it is the case now. And of course, in all of the other issues that Deputy Martin referred to in relation to industrial relations, that difficulty, much of those did occur uh, because I, as Minister for Transport, and my predecessor were determined to make sure that we could have as efficient a service as possible in relation to public transport and a CIE group that is sustainable. That was the action that the government take down, uh, took down. And as I have said, you, it is the very industrial relations mechanisms that play the role in resolving those issues that are the same mechanisms that must be allowed to do their work now. Thank you very much.